I need your power, okay? Eel. Ow. Eel. Ow. Eel. Ow. Once upon a time, there was a farmer. The farmer grew watermelons. That was his crop, and he was very successful. But one year, the chimpanzees, it seemed, became very jealous of this crop. And they pulled all of the watermelon from their vines. They stole some. They smashed some. And I'm sorry to say this. Some they cut in half, scooped out the flesh, ate the flesh, and defecated in the shell. They had no respect and no manners. So when the farmer came and saw that his crop had been destroyed by the chimpanzees, he was furious. And there was no one to blame because no human had done it. So of course he went home. And who did he blame? Who? The chimpanzees. He, he couldn't blame them. He couldn't chastise them. How can he chastise a monkey? So he went home. And who do you think he blamed? Of course you knew that. You knew it. He went home. And his wife, he gave her a hot time as they say in Jamaica. He gave her a warm, warm and warmer time. Anything she did was wrong. She was in the kitchen preparing the meal, singing, singing. He said, you make too much noise, my head hurts. Sorry, she said. She cooked the food in silence. She brought the food to him, he tasted the food. Ordinarily the food was delicious. For some reason today the food was not delicious. He said, there's too much salt in this food. Sorry, she said. She took the food back into the kitchen. She prepared more food without singing. And she brought the food without salt. There's not enough salt in this food. What is wrong with this man? She said, all right, she said. She went back into the kitchen, prepared another dish without singing, without too much salt, without too little salt. And she put it in front of him. He ate the food begrudgingly. He didn't say thank you, which he always did. And so she said, what's wrong with you? Can't you thank me for the food? I've made it three times. Who told her to say that? He lost it. He began to chastise her, chastise her. Everything she was was wrong. Everything she did was wrong. Everything she said was wrong. And he whipped himself up into such a frenzy. He whipped himself up into such a lather. But before he knew what he was saying, he was saying the three fatal words. And you know what the three fertile words are. He said, I don't want you in my house anymore. If I have to be scrutinized for my behavior, who do you think you are? I brought you here from your village to live in this house. How dare you? In fact, go back to where you came from. He said, go back to your village. I divorce you. She said, hey. He said, I she said, I dare you to say it again. I divorce you. She said, I dare you to say it three times. He said, I divorce you. I divorce you. I divorce you. How's that? She said, that suits me fine. And she left the house. She went to the river and she bathed herself clean, 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 squeaky clean. And then she came back from the river. She went into her room and she took shea butter and she rubbed shea butter into her skin until she glowed. And then she took all the perfumed oils that she possessed. She rubbed her body with the perfumed oils because now, now she didn't just glow, she smelt like heaven. And then she put on her best robes. She wrapped them tight, showing the ample rump and the huge hips, which in some parts of Africa are considered a bonus if you're a woman. Skinny women, mm -mm -mm. Sorry, no disrespect, Teresa. No disrespect, Teresa. But this voluptuousness, she made sure that the clothes hugged every voluptuous inch of her body. And then she took the possessions she wished to take with her, nothing he had given her, but everything she had brought with her from her village, went into a basket and onto her head. And she made sure, I'm gonna try and do this with one bad leg. She made sure that when she walked past him, he saw this. And then she looked at him like this. And she made the sound of derision. <laughs> and she left the house. And she was gone. Back to her village, where he told her to go. And all the women of the village, when they saw her going, they said, where are you going? She said, that fool, he lost his mind. He's forgotten who he is, but more importantly, 
he's forgotten who I am. So I am gone. And they said, hey, good for him. Don't worry, sister, they said. We won't help him in any way. We won't wash for him, we won't cook for him, we won't clean his house. Good, she said, that is our pact. And they refused. And the men of the house, they came. They said, ha, 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 you fool. What did you let go? The best thing that ever happened to you, she's gone back to her village. And our wives have made a pact. They will not cook for you. And they will not clean for you. And your aunties and your mother, they're long gone into heaven. So what will you do? You will have to go to the river yourself and wash your own clothes. You will have to go into your own kitchen and cook your own food. And he tried, but he'd had no training. I'm sure there's men in this room who could cook all day long. He wasn't like you. Yes, you're proud of your husband, I can see. Oh, he needs to learn. She will become prouder when you learn, okay? She's proud now, she could be prouder, okay? So, he was lost. No one would help him. And the food he attempted to make was disgusting. And the clothes he attempted to wash, you know that smell? That musty smell when you don't wash them properly? He smelt like that all the time. And the women in the village, they walked past him and they, hey! They cut their eyes at him and they made the sound of derision. When they saw him coming and his friends, they laughed. They said, we can't help you, brother. You did this to yourself. If there's any way you can save yourself, you should try it. Now, he certainly considered taking a second wife. But the word was out. He was not to be trusted. So he had no alternative. Meanwhile, back in her own village, she, who had been the pearl of the village, who had been the beauty of the village, when the men saw that she had returned, when the men saw that she had been repudiated by her husband, when the men realized that she was free, oh, joy. They came every day with gifts, gifts, gifts. They, they serenaded her. Do you want to sing? Okay, so I sing. If you said no, you don't have to. It's fine. It's okay if you don't want it. That's what you sing. Can you practice? Okay, it's a bit low, isn't it? I've got a low contralto. I'll take it up a tone or two. Okay. There's something wrong here. Something wrong with this picture, okay? The thing is, I'm singing, and what I'm not accustomed to, and it happens everywhere in the world, I thought it was a European phenomenon, but I see it's an everywhere phenomenon. There is music, and when there is music, I, it's, it's weird to me that people sit like that. Okay, so just, just use the rhythm, okay? And just move your bodies a little bit, okay? Ale bibalamo, abibala. Oh, si balamo, abibala. Si balamo, ah. Kele, kele mama, abibalamo. Oh, si balamo, ah. Kele, kele mama, abibalamo. Ale bibalamo. Sibalamo, ah, kele, kele mama, abibalamo, sibalamo, ah, kele, kele mama, abibalamo. That was what the men sang to her. And she sat there in all her queenly glory, accepting the praises, accepting the gifts, accepting, accepting, and then she looked in the distance. <laughs> Who did she see coming? No, he wasn't her husband. He'd repudiated her and he came into the village. Now, all these men who were serenading her were serenading her in the hope that she would choose one of them as her new husband. Yet here he came. 
Wife! Surely you're not speaking to me, she said. <laughs> Who else would I speak to? She said, not me. You repudiated me. You said the word. You said it three times. I am no longer your wife. Oh, you, it's a misunderstanding, he said. No, she said, I didn't misunderstand anything. You told me to go back to where I came from. You repudiated me. He said, no, you misunderstood. What I meant was, go back and see your family for a while and then return to me. She said, no, I'm sorry. This is not going to happen. You repudiated me. I did not. Yes, you did. I did not. Yes, you did. She turned to her parents. She said, mother, father, help me. They said, never in our lives. Our hair is gray. Have we experienced something like that? A man repudiates his wife and then comes to claim her. No, we have no wisdom for this situation, but... There is a holy man in the next village. He might be able to help you. And so they went to the holy man. She walked ahead, he walked behind saying, why do you rush? She said, because I want this done with now. They entered the next village. They found the holy man. They spoke with the holy man. The holy man, he sat, he listened, he listened, he listened. He said, I have to consult the book. And he went to the special place where the book was. And he uncovered the book, and he opened the book, and he went through all the verses, all the hadiths, and he found nothing. And he said, I cannot solve your problem. Perhaps I'm not educated enough, but if you go to the next village, there's a holier man than me, perhaps he can help you. Oh my goodness, said the wife, the ex-wife. And she and the ex-husband, they walked, they walked, they walked till the next village. They entered the next village, they gave their problem to the next holy man. He went to the secret place and he took out the book. He uncovered the book, he went through all the verses, all the verses. No, he said, there is no law written here that I understand. Perhaps you should go to the next village. And this was how they spent their day, going from village to village to village, trying to find a holy man who had enough wisdom to understand how to deal with this problem. And when things got to the point of utter frustration, one of the holiest men said, do you know there is a village? It's a few days walk, but in that village, they are so holy, they don't have cats because they don't want the cats to dig up the earth and defecate in their holy ground. They are so holy, they don't have dogs because they don't want the dogs to cock their legs and pee against the side of the holy trees. In that village, they are so holy that the holiest of the holy men will be able to help you. We will go there, she said, and they walked. And she did not stop walking for the three days. He kept saying, let's stay in this village. No, she said, I want this solved. She walked straight for three days, three nights, till finally they came to that holiest of holy villages. And it was true. There were no cats, there were no dogs. There were pious and holy people. They were kind-hearted, they were gentle, they were warm, they were welcoming. And she went to the elder woman of that village and she told her problem. And the elder woman of that village said, yes, I know the very man to deal with this situation. And they went to this higher, 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 higher holy man and told his problem. I see, I see, said the holy man. This needs prayer. Tomorrow, we will go to the mosque and we will pray and we will meditate. And after the prayer and after the meditation, I will give my decision. Now there is a guest house for you both to sleep in. No, nope, she said, I'm an unmarried woman. I will not sleep in a house with a man on my own. And he said, come on. She said, no, you repudiated me. I will not sleep in a house with you. And so she went to sleep in the house of the woman, the elder woman who advised them. And he, the husband, or the would-be husband, slept in the home of the holy man. The next morning, they went to the mosque. They washed their ears, their nose, their mouths, and they said their prayers. They went down on their knees, they bowed, they sat up, they bowed, they sat up, they stood, they bowed, they looked up. They spoke to the angel on their right shoulder, they spoke to the angel on the left shoulder. They spoke to the angel on the right shoulder, they spoke to the angel on the left shoulder. They bowed, they looked up, they bowed, they went down, they bowed, they sat up. The whole prayer was made. And at the end of the prayer, everybody said, Allah Akbar. And then the holy man said, now, where is the man who divorced his wife? He said, I'm the man who divorced his wife. And he said, you're a fool. Because from your own mouth, you have sealed your fate. You divorced your wife. 
You've spoken in this holy place. You divorced your wife. She is no longer yours. She belongs to herself. And she's free to marry anyone she chooses. And as he stood there with his mouth opening and closing and closing and opening, with no words flying out, that ex-husband watched his wife, ex-wife, leave the mosque and walk, walk, walk. And he had to go back to his village. I'm not sure if his cooking improved or if his washing improved or if his cleaning improved. But I do know that back in her village, she was serenaded. The men looked at her pleadingly and asking her to choose one of them. And she said, I choose. And that's the end of that story. Thank you.